Dana White's Contender Series season is upon us. And if you weren't around this channel this time last year when Dana White's Contender Series was going on, you don't know that this is one of my favorite times of the year because breaking down these prospects is something I just enjoy the heck out of. We're going to do that today. We're going to break down the matchup between Peyton Talbot and Reyes Cortez, also known as Junior Cortez, depending on the fight you're watching. Um, I guess Junior is just his nickname. Whatever. He switched it up. This is in the bantamweight division. Both guys, a couple of up-and-comers. We did see Reyes Cortez fighting against uh, Christian Rodriguez in on Dana White's Contender Series in the past. He did not get the win there. Rodriguez did miss weight, so there was that. Um, it was a competitive matchup, but it was clear that Rodriguez won the fight. Uh, Cortez, he, uh, I mean, he did all right. He didn't do bad. He didn't look like he didn't belong. And then we will later find out that Christian Rodriguez is actually a pretty good contender. So when we look at this matchup here, for Peyton Talbot, obviously he's 5-0 on his career, so he's 5-0 in his last five. 4-1 in the last five for Cortez, that loss coming on Contender Series previously, like I mentioned. So this matchup's interesting because both guys tend to be strikers, okay? Let's start with the Cortez side. We saw him on the, on the Contender Series before, like I said. He showed some good striking there, but he was clearly outmatched in the striking by Rodriguez. However, if you watch the rest of his fights, his fights after that, you watch his fights before that, whatever, he shows really fast hands and good combinations. He's able to throw, you know, you know, three, four, five punch combinations really quick with that hand speed. He works the calf kick really well, and he keeps a very active jab, just constantly going. And he's obviously a very durable guy because he made it to decision in that contender series matchup where, I mean, he was taking some serious damage, but he was able to make it to decision. He's a very durable guy, like I said, but the calf kick didn't get to use that to success very well against Rodriguez. Um, the wrestling was another thing that he failed to be able to get going against Rodriguez. He took him down a couple of times, but he was able to, Rodriguez popped right back up. That body lock takedown seems to be his go-to. He gets, you know, gets wrapped around and just kind of drags guys to the mat. It's, uh, you know, it, it worked for him a lot on the regional scene. It just didn't work in that Rodriguez matchup, but he has shown success with it. It is a good tool. Um, I know he's, they, everybody says he has like this wrestling background or whatever, but his hands seem to be the most effective weapon he has, mixed with that calf kick force. His hands seem to be the most e effective weapon that he has. So for uh, for Reyes Cortez, he's a good striker. The wrestling is there, but it's just not to the level that I would say he needs to use it against guys like Rodriguez or guys who are, you know, the upper echelon. Now, when he's going against a guy like T Peyton Talbot, who's relatively unproven because, I mean, 5-0, and oh, it's, you just haven't had a lot of fights. It's a different story, okay? What have we seen from Peyton Talbot? Peyton Talbot, he's a good striker. He kind of likes a brawl. And uh, by a brawl, I don't mean just like that big swing and haymakers trading, but just coming forward, throwing hands, getting hit, doesn't seem to care. Um, his striking defense isn't the best, but he's very durable, and he's shown that in his fights, so it hasn't been an issue for him yet. But like I said, he's only 5-0, and so who knows? It might change as he fights some tougher guys. But he has good forward pressure, and he just breaks guys with forward pressure. In his last matchup, he was fighting a guy who... Uh, was like eight and one at the time, shot a lot of takedowns, got Peyton to the, to the mat. Mr. Talbot here, he was able to get right back to his feet, you know, worked his way to his feet a couple times, but he was able to get back to his feet, probably lost the first round, but was able to just keep the pressure on and eventually get the knockout. All five of his wins are by knockout, I do believe, unless I'm mistaken, but I don't believe that's a, that's a mistake. Um, he does have pretty good volume, pretty good power. He just kind of walks guys down, hands here, not not up, just right here, just throwing shots, just combinations. And they're not really combinations in the fact that, like, they're in the same way that Cortez is throwing them. His are more just like single shots or or one or like one twos that are like put together close enough that it could be considered a combination. But they're not combinations in the traditional sense, if that if that makes any sense. So he's just throwing a lot of like volume and just sticking shots and walking guys down. And he does a really good uh, good job of that. And then throwing that knee mid-combination while he's getting in close and just dropping that knee right up the middle of guys. So he, he is a good fighter, but the takedown defense isn't the best. The problem is uh, he, he does get taken down, but he's able to work back to his feet, but he does get taken down. So I think in this matchup where Cortez has the advantage is if he's able to get that body lock and just use that to win a couple of exchanges, win the striking on, on the feet is, is close. Um, I will say Talbot has fantastic cardio. I've never seen him slow down a bit. And the fact that he's able to break guys with that just forward pressure, that constant pressure, 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 shows the level of cardio which Talbot has. Now, something interesting about a guy like Talbot, he, uh, I believe, has a degree in like psychology or something like that, which you can go two ways with this. One, you can say, well, if I mean, obviously he's not you know, focusing entirely on his fighting if he's spending time going to college, getting a degree. Well, okay, maybe, but also... Psychology is an interesting uh, thing to have with 
your MMA career because understanding the idea, the psychology of your opponent can be very important in there because a lot of the fight game is mental. When you're, when you're fighting a guy, if you can break them mentally, which we've seen Pal, uh, Peyton Talbot, I almost said Talbot, we, what we've seen Peyton Talbot do multiple times is break guys by just pushing forward, throwing those shots and just being durable and being able to beat guys that way. So having the psychology understanding to know that, hey, I can break my opponent if I just keep this pressure going and then understanding how to not break himself might be a, an advantage. I don't know, we haven't seen it enough yet because it's only five in his career, like I said. Good matchup. I think this is going to be a very fun matchup for as long as it lasts. Um, both guys are durable as heck, though, so I do think we probably get a decision here. I think both of these guys are going to be exchanging on the feet, mix, uh, trying to mix in the takedowns for the Cortez side. I don't think Talbot's going to mix in a ton of takedowns. doesn't seem to be really his game plan, um, but he, he probably is the harder hitter of the two, uh, except for that calf kick. That calf, calf kick is pretty, pretty gnarly, but uh, Talbot probably punches a little bit harder, but uh, Cortez has the faster hands. This matchup is close um, based on what we've seen so far, but I think Cortez is going to be the guy who is able to get the better, the more strikes, the better strikes, and just at the end of the fight have better a better showing of himself. Talbot's going to be you know, getting that head snap back, his hair flying all over the place. And uh, I think even though he's going to put on a good count of himself and probably win the third round just by putting that pace on, I think he's probably going to lose the first two rounds and Cortez is going to get the decision. That's where I'm at in this fight. Guys, if you've done any research on it, I'd love to hear from you. Also, like this video on your way out. I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next Dana White's Contender Series fight. See you there.